Hey guys, how we doing? I'm back in the shop today and uh, I'm making the camshafts for the uh, mounting block for that adapter plate. I got that thing squared away and uh, I'm working on a lathe right now and uh, making some cams. I've got one, one of them's done. I got two more to go and I'm going to get some footage of uh, me turning these cams on the lathe here and uh, I'll jump over here on the mill and show you real quick uh, the plate and the blocks that they're going to mount into. So hang right on, we'll show you that. Uh, adapter plate, get that thing all straightened out. Uh, you know, I didn't even bother getting any footage of it. It's just kind of a redundant process and uh, I'm kind of tired tired of looking at the whole thing myself. I was glad to just get it over with and get to this point. But as you can see here, um, these are my mounting blocks that the lathe pins are going to sit down into. And the cams that I've got are going to come in through the side here. I'm going to retain it on the back with a snap ring. And uh, on the front I've got a hex nut that I'm going to just put a real small weld on to uh, drive the cam. I'll show you that camshaft here. This is one of the cams right here and as you can see the, uh, the offset on the center is there. I use my forward jaw and offset that that lobe. It's got a 70 thousandths offset on it and the uh, the lobe itself is 530 thousandths in diameter and uh, the shaft portion of itself is, uh, of the shaft portion of it is 7 sixteenths so what I'm going to do is I'll have this coming through here like that and, uh, and like I said I'll have a hex nut on the front of it I'd have much rather just been able to include you know one piece here turned myself a hex on the end of it but I don't have this thing set up and going so that I can get that done you know I would have used this to index and cut a hex head on there but I gotta get this done first so that's why I'm using hardware that I've got but <clears throat> you know this cam will sit in here like this and of course you'll rotate it like so to lock the pin on the back of the chuck. There'll be three of them, one for each. Um, you know, and on the on the opposite side of the lobe back here, I'm gonna have to cut a radius into that so that when I set the jaw the the chuck down in there, it can it can slide past, and then when I rotate the cam lobe will lock onto the pin, just the same way that it goes onto the lathe. So uh, that's what I got going on here. And I'm gonna put the camera over on the lathe and get a little bit of action. Uh, turn in a couple more of these. So hang on and uh, bring you back and get some. Get some uh, footage of that. Alright, so I get the camera set up now. Uh, I went ahead and I epoxied some real strong little magnets onto the feet of my tripod. And I got the tripod sitting on the tailstock of the lathe right now. So, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and uh, get it center drilled and you know start cutting my diameters on there now I've got this outside diameter to size right now it's at uh, 530 and I'm offset already so I'm gonna just go ahead and put my center drill in there and then I'll switch over from the chuck to the live center get this on and uh, start turning some 
some diameters. All right, so here we go. Bring you along for the ride. I hope it doesn't shake too much. Not really a good viewpoint there. You know, I can't, I can't get the tripod up any higher the way that it is right now. get to it. Go ahead and touch off from the end here and get my zero set. I've got a Two inch travel indicator on the bedway that I'm using to gauge how far it is I'm going. So I want I want a 290 thousandths stick out right there. Actually, no, I'm sorry, I want to, what did I say, 290, I want a 240, 240 stick out. So there we go, there's 240, I'm going to go ahead and scribe myself a little witness line in there so I know where to stop. <laughs> Go ahead and get a measurement on here so I can see where I'm at. Alright, so I'm at 466 right now. And I want to be at uh, 437. So. Oh, let's see, 37, 40, 26, 29. So I got 29, I'm going to take off.
to be right on the diameter right there. So my size right there is good. I'm on 7 16 and I gotta come on down over here. I'm, I'm making the cam lobe 500 thousandths wide, so I'm gonna move from where I'm at 500 thousandths over. And uh, we'll go ahead and get the back side of this shaft turned down to 7 16 as well. Once I got that, uh, I'll go ahead and park this off. So. Hang on just a minute, <clears throat> I'll bring you back and get you some more of the action here. Alright, I brought you back in. <clears throat> I'm turning these diameters down. Got this little cam just about done. I'm going to go ahead and get the back portion of this thing turned down. And Once that's done, I'll go ahead and put a couple little chamfer edge brakes on here and I'll part it off. There she is. I figured I'd give you a little look here at the offset on the on the part. So obviously you can see this is my low side right here. And there's my high side. And I wanted 70 thousandths. It's at 69. One thousandth. Good enough for what I'm doing. This is uh, camshaft number two. I'm um, where I want to be, 240,000 back. We had to get this turned down. measurement off that so I can figure out how much more I need to take off. Get my tool out of the way here. Alright, so I got 26 more to come off of that.
time and it's turned down. That's 437 right there. And I'm gonna move down thickness of my cutter. And uh, I'm gonna go 500 thousandths after that. So that, uh, and that 500 thousandths is gonna be width of the cam load. There we go. An eighth inch wide insert. Uh, parting blade is my eighth, and now I'll move uh, 500 for the width of the cam load. There we go, my cam load width. are vibrating all over the place. Get them off there so we don't have to listen to that anymore. Alright, here we go. diameter set, I get the cam load width set, and uh, what I need to do, do now is, is move down the one uh, length of the cam itself, which is going to be 1 inch, 140 thousandths, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. As it turns out, I had it sticking out just, just enough to get uh, the length I need on that thing, as you can see, I'm pretty much right up against the chuck. But that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and get that rest of that material turned off there. I'll throw a couple. I'll break a couple edges, and I'm gonna park this off. Get you back in here for a quick shot. <clears throat> got my indicator on there, four jaws in there, and uh, I get it dialed in within about a thousandth, which what I'm doing right here is more than plenty. All right? So now I just get offset it and uh, get her all dialed in from that point. So here we go.
So there's my 70 right there, 71. You know, with 1,000s, not even gonna matter. Let's see what we got. Oh, I'm a little bit high. All right, here we go, 70. Seventy-one. We'll call that good. And no, I am not trying to compete with uh, A-Bomb 79 here. That guy's uh, got a talent for the four jaw. <laughs> Kind of fun to watch them, how quick you can get these things dialed in, I'll tell you. Alright, so there we go. I'm within about a thousandth, which I'm satisfied with. You know, it's plenty good for what I'm doing. Is our 70, oh, 72. It's gonna work just fine. Cut off real quick, throw a center drill in it, and uh, then I'll pull my left center in, get on location, and start getting this cam turned out. There we go. Here we go, there's my zero. <clears throat> now I'm gonna move over 240 thousandths. And get this thing to diameter.
All right, so we're sitting at 445 right now, and I want to go to 437. So I've got uh, three eight thousandths. Wipe the chips off so I'm not making chips. Alright, so I'm at 435. And that'll work just fine because I'm going to put a 7 16th hole in there. So it'll be two thousandths under is just fine because I want it to turn in there. I don't want it to be a real snug fit. So. <clears throat> There's my location right there. Now I'm going to move over the width of my cutter, eighth inch. And then I'm going to go 500. Okay, there's the uh, width of my cam load. So here we go. See what we got here. Check this side first with the caliper. That way I've got a kind of a standard to compare against. 433. 441. Alright. Eight thousands. cam load was set <clears throat> and what I'm going to do now is move down to the end of the part set my link for it to be cut off Chamfers. Break the edge, I should say. And there we go. We're going to go ahead and part this thing off. There she is, boys. Last cam. So what I'm going to do now is break this setup down. I'm going to go ahead and put the three jaw back on there. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and drill through all three of the cams and tap them for uh, 5 16 18. 
All right, guys, I got you back. Here we go. Got one of the cams chucked up in the three jaw, and I'm going to drill it all the way through with a F bit, which is the tap drill size necessary for that thread. And uh, I'll go ahead and punch this one through there. I'll, actually, I'm going to do all three of them, and then I'll swap out, put the tap in, and thread all three of them. Here we go. I'm just kind of going easy with it because I don't want to spin the cam in the jaws. and swap out for my countersink. Nice little chamfer on there. So, there's one drilled through. Go ahead and do the rest of them.
a little bit of gel marks on there. Good threads. I'll polish it up. That's all right. Okay, guys, I'll bring you back in a minute and show you the next step in my process here. Here we go. Uh, I've got the cams all finished up, and I went ahead and cut the snap ring grooves into them, and uh, that's how I'm going to retain them. Get a little 7 16 uh, outside snap ring there, fit it right down into that groove. And uh, that's what will keep them from pulling out on me. And on the front, the front side here, not sure what I'm going to do yet. I might make uh, like a, a press-in bushing or something with a, a shoulder on it. I don't know. Figure it out when I get there. But there they are. Uh, I got an extra one here. I only need three, but they're done. So that's uh, that's going to be the end of this video. Hopefully, you guys liked watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. I figured I'd throw in a little bit of bonus <coughs> bonus footage in here. I'm uh, gonna get this thing glowing red, possibly. I don't know if my little torch here will do it, but I want to see how this thing takes to heat treating. Alright guys, there's my oil right there, yeah I know foam cups not really the best idea. There she goes. I think we got it. It's cool. Cool to the touch. She looks all right. I'm going to go ahead and clean it up and we'll give it the file test. Okay guys, got my file here, got this thing cleaned up. 
uh, I really can't I can't tell whether <laughs> I'm in view of the camera or not I believe that I am <clears throat> I don't have a viewfinder on this thing but you know it's hardened good and hard I, I mean I don't know what type of metal this is so you know I wasn't able to uh, treat it the way that it should be treated you know I just kinda used standard practice there but <laughs> you know for what I'm doing this will be more than adequate let's see what we got oh yeah just skating right across it, won't even touch it so that cam is you know very very hard probably up in the 65 to geez I don't know I, around 65 Rockwell C I would guess so I'll do the same thing to all the rest of them I figured it'd be kind of a extra little ending something cool for the video so all right I'm gonna I'm gonna shut her down here and call it a day and uh, next video I put up I'll probably just be showing the lathe chop on the rotary table itself <laughs>